In this video, we're going to talk about the capacitors that we've constantly been discussing with the motors. Now, it's always a toss up whether or not to talk about capacitors first or motors first, but sort of like the old chicken and the egg conversation. But in this case, we have already talked about motors, so let's go give a little bit of attention to the capacitor. So capacitors as motors are either classified as a starting capacitor or running capacitor. When we're replacing capacitors, it's desirable to use the exact replacement, which means you're going to use a capacitor with the same microfarad rating and the same voltage limit rating. You cannot interchange run and start caps. So starting with the start caps, start caps are high capacity electrolytic units that are intended for momentary use in starting motors. Start capacitors usually range from 50 to 700 microfarads and they're normally encased in plastic. Again, you can pull a start capacitor someplace and I'm sure you'll find it in metal or some other substance, but we're going to be talking about the normal when we talk about capacitors. So start capacitors are normally encased in plastic. This is an example of a start capacitor. It has a microfarad range on it and has a voltage rating. Okay, in this case it's 540 to 648 microfarads, 330 volts. Now don't let the voltage fool you. That's not your input voltage. That's the voltage that is allowed on the start winding. Don't forget about what we call back EMF. That's voltage that's generated by the start winding, which is going to be slightly higher than the voltage you find on the source. Run capacitors usually have a much lower capacitance rating than start capacitors. They usually range 2 to 40 microfarads. You can actually see them as high as 55 microfarads. They're made for continuous duty use and are normally sealed in a metal can. Okay, so they're made of metal. And again, that's normal. I can go out and I can find a run capacitor that's plastic. I can find one that's made of um, sort of silicon material, but in the normal use, they're metal. This is an example of a run capacitor. You'll see that it's rated from four microfarads, 370 volts AC, and it allows a plus or minus 5% tolerance. It's rated for 50 or 60 hertz. And the outdoor operate, the operating temperature is between negative 40 to positive 70 degrees Celsius. Motor start capacitors that are in series with the start switch and the start winding of the motor. Okay, in other words, when you look at an electrical schematic, start capacitors are wired in series with the start switch and the start winding of the motor. This allows for a large phase shift to create a good starting torque. But what we mean about phase shift is the start capacitor actually passes AC current through it, but it does it at a delay. So when you look at a sine wave of plotting the original sine wave and then the shifted sine wave, you'll find that the, sh that the start winding can be 10 to 15 degrees out of phase with the run winding. This allows for some additional starting capacity on the motor. Since it is a start capacitor, it's not rated for continuous duty and is limited to about 20 starts per hour. If you start using it more often than that, the, it will begin to overheat and it will wear down. Motor run capacitors are rated for continuous duty and they're very commonly used for PSC motors. Okay, PSC motor always has the run cap in the motor. Okay. The capacitor is matched to provide about a 90 degree phase shift between the current in the auxiliary and main motor windings to 80 to 100% rated power. Okay, auxiliary windings, separate name for start winding. Okay, in, it stores and releases an electrical charge in the auxiliary winding to increase the current lag between it and the main winding. Now this is what makes the PSC or permanent split capacitor motors so efficient. 
there's always a charge on the start winding or auxiliary winding as it's also called. The capacitor remains in the circuit the entire time the motor is running. Some capacitors have some sort of mark on them, usually a red dot, sometimes a white dot, to indicate the terminal that should be connected to the run terminal. With this arrangement, an internal short circuit to the capacitor will blow the system fuse without passing the current through to the motor start winding. So if you see a mark on a capacitor, a red dot or a white dot near a terminal, that's the terminal that should be connected to the run terminal of the motor. And this is just an example of that. You can actually see the red dot. So to test a capacitor, the first operation whenever you test a capacitor is to discharge it. A capacitor holds an electrical charge. It's a storage component. So if you don't discharge it, you can actually end up on the receiving end of a very large electrical charge. Don't discharge it by shorting out the terminals, even though you'll see people in the field do this. It can damage the capacitor. To avoid an electrical shock, the technician should never place fingers across the terminals before properly discharging the capacitor. The proper way to put a discharge a capacitor is to put it in a protective case and connect a 20,000 ohm 2 watt resistor across the terminals. Now that's not going to happen in the field. Most often of the time what you're going to do is take a screwdriver with an insulated handle and short the terminals out after making sure you don't have any power going to the system anymore. Most start capacitors have a bleed resistor across the terminals. This makes it so the capacitor can be tested without with the bleed resistor in place. It's always a good practice to make sure the charge has been bled off anyway, so always discharge that capacitor. There's three ways to test a capacitor. We're going to start with the oldest method first, and that's to test with an ohm meter. Capacitors can be roughly checked by using an ohm meter. The ohm meter is used in testing capacitors and should be able to read a high resistance and have at least a 100 ohm scale. To test the capacitor, disconnect it from the wiring and place the ohm meter leads on the terminals. If the capacitor is not shorted, the meter will make a rapid swing towards zero and then slowly return to infinity or OL on a digital meter. If the capacitor is an internal short, the meter will stay at zero, indicating that the capacitor will not take a charge. What you're actually doing is attempting to charge the capacitor using a battery in the ohm meter. It's always wise to make sure the battery in your meter is good. An open capacitor will read high with no dip and no recovery. In other words, it will go directly to OL and stay there. The second method is to test with a capacitance checker. Most of your meters have a capacitance checking setting on it now. Set your meter to capacitor checking, discharge and disconnect the leads from the capacitor, securely connect the common from the meter to the common on the capacitor, connect the other lead from the meter to the start side of the capacitor, wait for the numbers to stabilize. The number that displays is your capacitance without a load and without voltage being applied. It's a, if it is out of tolerance, you should replace the capacitor. And again, check the side of the capacitor. It will tell you what the tolerances are. Now, capacitors sometimes act differently under a load. So the third method to check a capacitor is testing it under a load. A capacitor that checks out perfectly with no load can still be, in fact, be faulty with a load applied to it. If you suspect this is the case, it's important to test under a load. Sometimes what you see happens is a capacitor will check out properly but then still you'll have high motor amperages even though the motor's good or the compressor's good. And you could still be the capacitor that's just not acting properly under a load condition. So it's in, before you go through this test, it's extremely important that your meter leads and test probe be in a very good condition. Okay, you're gonna be dealing with higher than volt, normal voltages in a smaller area. If at all possible, shorten your test probes on your meter leads using some, a lot of leads now come with, uh, with some clamp-ons 
that you can actually push over the leads to just to leave a little bit of metal visible. That's what you want. You're going to need to get two readings while the equipment is operating, and they're all off either the capacitor or the start winding. So you want to get a start winding amperage, and you do this by using your clamp-on meter on the start wire coming off of the capacitor. Then you also want to get the capacitor voltage that's from the common terminal of the capacitor to the start connection using a voltmeter. So you want the amperage of your start winding and you want the capacitor voltage. Then just plug those two numbers into a formula. You take your start winding amps, multiply it by 2652. Get that total and divide it by the voltage that you calculated. That is going to be your microfarads that your capacitor is actually running. If it's out of tolerance, replace that capacitor. So again, get your start winding amps and get your capacitor voltage. Now this is not your line voltage. This is the actual voltage of the capacitor between the common and the start winding connection. Uh, so the two terminals on the capacitor. Get those two, multiply your start winding amps by 2652, and then divide that total by the capacitor voltage. You'll get your microfarads that it's actually working. So that's capacitor. Now the other thing that you're going to see us mentioning a lot in air conditioning is hard start kits. A hard start consists, kit consists of a solid state relay and a capacitor in a single package. Now there's some other ones also that contain two parts. It's a start capacitor and a potential relay. So just be aware of which one you have. They're both hard start kits. Two terminals on the kit are simply connected in parallel with the run capacitor terminals. So this is an example of a solid state start kit. You're going to just connect them in parallel. One goes to one side of the capacitor, the other goes to the other side of the capacitor. Okay, just like that. And then, uh, he, then here you'll have your line voltage coming in or your run winding. Here you'll have your start winding. A hard start kit wired in parallel with the run capacitor turns a PSC motor into a CSCR motor to resolve starting problems. And again, that should say CSCR motor to resolve starting problems. The positive temperature coefficient or PTC device controls current flow to the windings. The solid state relay contains the PTC that reacts rapidly to temperature change by greatly increasing its resistance to current flow. In other words, as the motor starts, the PTC will initially allow a large current needed to start the motor. However, in a period of less than one second, the heat from that large current will cause the PTC resistance to increase from about 50 ohms at room temperature to over 80,000 ohms. This high resistance stops the flow of current through the relay, allowing normal current flow through the run capacitor in the motor windings. So again, this is a CSCR motor, capacitor start, capacitor run. Advantages to hard start kits, they're low cost. It's a simple two connection installation. It can be used on all single phase motors up to 340 volts and motors up to 5 horsepower. That has, it's reliable and has a long life. It increases torque by up to 300%. You can add additional torque by wiring second and third kits in parallel with the first kit. I've never needed to do that, but it's doable. So in this presentation, we talked about run, we talked about capacitors, two types of capacitors, start capacitor, run capacitor. Way to tell them apart, start capacitor is plastic, run capacitor for most part is metal. Start capacitor must be taken out of the circuit with a start switch, run capacitor stays in the circuit. To test capacitors, best way is to use a capacitor checker on your meter. And then if that isn't giving you the results you desire, test it under load. You need to get two measurements, amperage from your start winding and, amper and the actual capacitance voltage. Okay, the voltage on the capacitor. Hard start kits, 
change a PSC motor to a CSCR motor, capacitor start, capacitor run.